People are learning that overlapping elements in branding design always hurt legibility and are getting rid of them. Let's talk about it. Shadows are outlines on signatures. Even when drop shadows are done properly, they generally do not make for easier reading as there is more for the eye to take in and decipher. Drop shadows are a kind of overlapping and as such do not add to the ease of reading. Sooner or later, clients will realize this and will want cleaner, easier to read type in their identities as we see in the following examples. Number one, the Campbell script word mark was designed clear back in 1869. It has served them well. Then in the 1990s, someone decided to give it a black drop shadow, no doubt to boost legibility. It did not last long as they saw that legibility was lessened, not improved. Number two, Hershey's use of dimensional type on its labels is another example of someone's good idea that turns out to be bad. Number three, the Hertz heavy drop shadow was an attempt to make yellow have contrast against black. The yellow bar underneath the new signature is much better. Number four, Hobby Lobby's orange type with white halo plus blue border and a shadow made a very complex signature. Their simpler signature is so much easier to read. Number five, even with Little Caesar's much smaller black signature compared to the outlined orange one, it is easy to see which gives greater clarity. Overlapping elements inherently work against instant readability. Identities are usually improved when overlapping is omitted. Number six, Avianca's wavy lines were not a major nuisance, but the signature is more readable without them. Number seven, DISH Network's original identity was created in 1996. Since then, they have altered their identity six times, usually omitting elements that were finally seen as unnecessary. Six times in 23 years is some sort of record and must have taken a financial toll. Number eight, eBay's mishmash of lowercase with caps and different fonts plus different colors has given way to one font, all in lowercase. The multicolored treatment is still used, but a single color version is also used. Number nine, Viennestat Vein with its hodgepodge of caps and lowercase, as well as different fonts, was interrupted with the shield. Now the shield is a focal point and the type can be easily read. Number 10, Tessorit's former logo came across as a hexagon with a two-tone stripe that was actually supposed to be an isometric black cube with a turquoise stripe around it. Their new logo with a gradient can also be shown in a single solid color. We talked in a previous lesson about the difference between shallow and deep containment. Deep containment gives something important to the identity, whereas shallow containment does not. Look how many companies have realized that the shallow containment of their identity not only added nothing, but made the letters smaller than they needed to be for the overall size of the identity. Size matters when legibility is concerned. Number 11, the original Alcoa logo was solid, but is improved by being brought outside the containing shape. Number 12, Best Buy's former signature was always subordinated to the price tag shape. Now it is freed and the price tag logo is subordinate to the signature as it should be. Number 13, the oval around the boot signature added some mass but little else. Now the word mark has undergone a few modest refinements and can be bigger in the same space. Number 14, Eventbrite's signature can also be bigger in the same space without the containing shape. Number 15, J.C. Penney's signature was dwarfed inside that square. Now it is free. Number 16, MasterCard's identity is cleaner with the signature separated from the logo. Number 17, Principal got rid of its containing triangle, which took a lot of space, and replaced it with a monogram. Number 18, 
Cache omitted its flag shape, which didn't match its straight type, and is much more effective for it. Number 19. Snapple straightened its type and omitted the red racetrack shape for cleaner identity. Number 20. Zillow decided that the house shape was already a container for their stylized Z monogram. So why have another container around that? Beside, the former logo could remind someone of a house being swept away in a tornado. Getting rid of that was also a smart move. Number 21. Rexall's heavier word mark is a big improvement over its former tightly contained identity. Number 22. WNBA's monogram was so tiny inside its containment that it was often illegible. This redesign is a major improvement. As we have seen, drop shadows on type or containment that adds no benefit are both types of overlapping that make identities less legible and therefore less effective. There is a smart move away from such things. For more information, go to logodesigntheory.com. If you found this useful, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and share this with anyone who needs to know more about logo design.